Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. <laughs> Just to confirm that I'm not actually dead. I do still exist and I will be posting some bonsai videos now and again. Oh, I haven't done one for ages. It's just the time of year when there's not much going on and I've been busy doing other things. Um, so the, <laughs> the bonsai have been watered. And that's it. That's all that I've done for quite a long time at the moment. What I'm doing today is I want to benchmark my trees as they are at this point in the year. So the idea is I'm doing a short video clip of each one and the software I use to edit my videos allows me to take a still. So it's like a photo from the video, which I can then take into my photo editing software and sort of tidy up, brighten and make look pretty and all that sort of stuff and store away as a picture of what my trees look like now. Um, but while we're while I'm doing each one, we'll have a quick look at it as well. Um, it's easier to look at them in here than it is in the garden. Now, this is my trident maples, plural. There are three. Two have been um, trunk chopped um, earlier this year, and one has an air layer, which I'm not proposing to take off today. We did look at it, and it didn't look that happy. Um, but the top of the tree is not dead. You know, there is life in this. It's not you know it's not it's got green leaves on it it's not dead um, and the buds look reasonable as well so um, I'm still hoping that that's going to have rooted so I'm just just trying to find a I think that's probably about the best angle and then my plan is to just hold the video camera still and that will be the point at which I can take a photo if you see what I mean so that's that one now this is my only um, Satsuki Azalea, or Saski Azalea. <laughs> Neither are wrong and both are right, technically. Um, you choose how you want to say it. Um, I like Satsuki. That's how I first heard a tree described, so that sort of stuck with me. Um, still yet to decide on the front on this. Is it that? Or is it that? I don't like the fact that the top of the tree slopes away. I like them to come forward. So if this is going to be the front of the tree, <laughs> we need to thicken up some parts here, although I do like to see the trunk. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. That's had quite a, quite a trim this year and we did get a few flowers. So uh, let's keep the camera still. That's that one. Now this is my um, Fuji cherry, the Kojo no Mei. And um, it's just been allowed to grow this year. I started to do some wiring and actually broke several quite large branches. It's incredibly brittle, so I thought we'll give that game up. <laughs> and all I've done this year is let it grow. I haven't pruned it, I haven't trimmed it, I've just let it grow. On the grounds that it came out of a garden tub, you know, a planter. And this is its first time in a bonsai pot and it didn't have very good roots. So I thought if we let it grow, the top growth will push the roots out one goes with the other. So um, it's a bit of a monster, it's quite a, quite a large tree, um, but it has some, has some form to it. Not, nothing, I didn't do that. This tree naturally did all these curly bits on the trunk because it was quite a young tree when I got it. Um, I've pulled some branches down a bit to try and get some depth to it. But as I said, it's incredibly brittle. So um, we've got a nice lot of growth on there, which hopefully will produce blooms. That's the theory. And then once it's bloomed, I'll think about what I'm going to do next. So at the moment, I just, just need to sort of keep still so that I can get a picture. Come down a bit. Somewhere around there. This is one of my um, Acer Palmatum hybrids of some sort. It's an Acer tree, no name. Um, it's a nice tree. I like this one a lot. This one looks like you could see this tree in nature, a bit bigger than this. <laughs> so I like this one quite a lot. Um, this had the embryo growth tips pinched out methodically early in the spring. So as the growth starts, you get a pair of leaves and an embryo growth that, is, that becomes the extensions and I pinched them all out to stop those extensions 
and it's worked. This has only had one little trim this year and it's kept its shape. And well, hopefully you'll agree to have a maple that hasn't been trimmed much looking like that at this time of year, it's worth the effort in the spring to pinch those tips out. So ramification is now very good on this tree. So pleased with this one. And this is the other maple with no name. Um, this one nearly lost this branch completely. It snapped trying to bend it. And I basically glued it back together. And the amount of growth it's had, obviously the sap is capable of getting through there. So the branch was saved. Um, as far as this one is concerned, to me, this one hasn't got such a nice shape as the previous one that we looked at. And to me, the reason is obvious. The apex is not big enough. We have a branch here and a branch here, and then we have to come right in here. This needs to be here. So next year we have to put growth on the apex without the three lower, the three main lower branches extending any more than they are now. So we'll get that nice dome shape. And being able to see the trunk through the gaps again, this was all pinched out earlier in the spring. So uh, that's that one. Right, I can't remember whether this is the Austrian black pine or, <laughs> or the Japanese black pine, but I'll know from my notes. Um, I don't like this tree and I don't really know what to do with it. Um, so temporarily it's just been left to its own devices. It's just, I just don't like that sort of shape. And at the moment I don't really know what to do with it. Um, I mean, I've got the lower branches are incredibly weak and then it's got four branches coming out of the same point and a very strong upward growing point to it which has got buds I think that was chopped and the, you know there's back budding here uh, I don't know what to do with it at the moment so at the moment I'm doing nothing with it um, as I said I, I'm really not keen on that at all I might I might even get rid of this on the grounds that if I don't know what to do with it and I can't make anything of it, of it, then why am I keeping it? That's sort of my view. But for now I've got it, so that's it. Next is this small juniper. Um, now this has lent itself to this shape. Um, I, I can't say, strictly speaking, that I shaped it like this. Um, it's probably how I got it. I might keep this as a small juniper and just thicken up these pads and just keep it like this sort of size and let the trunk and everything thicken up. It's difficult to say what else to do. So that's probably exactly what I'm going to do is just leave it as it is, thicken up the pads. Um, we can do, you know, we can lower some of these branches. I have started. So we can get these to drop down a bit, they're wired, and then follow suit with these round here. Yeah, drop the thing, uh, <laughs> this end branch here, possibly make a new apex out of one of these. So it's got possibilities as a small tree. So that's probably all it's gonna be. So let's get in there for our uh, photo. This is my little Alberto spruce or white spruce as it's sometimes called and um, this was just bought as a nursery plant just a bush and most of it was removed sort of leaving this little tree behind I haven't really done any styling since then um, I did put some wire on it which bit in quite badly uh, in in a couple of places but um, I think again I'm going to keep this as a small tree I've got a feeling this branch here might have to come off because it's, it's immediately above this one and far too close together. I think originally I left them both because I wasn't absolutely sure which one of the two I wanted to keep. So I kept them both for the, for the time being. But um, yeah, it's got some nice form to this branch coming out here. 
you know, we can start forming some pads with the amount of um, foliage I've now got. Um, seems to react to pinching back quite strongly and produces quite bushy growth. So it could be easy to work with. Um, uh, yeah, so I think again, we'll keep this as a small plant. I suspect this branch will have to come off, do it in the spring and sort out something at the top. If this bit's gonna stay, it's not gonna stay dead straight like that. It'll need, it'll need something done with it. But uh, that's as it is now. Right, and this is the other black pine. So <laughs> the other one was either the Australian or the Japanese black pine. And whatever one that was, this is the other one. <laughs> and again, at the moment, I do not like this tree and I'm not really sure what to do with it. It's got massive long needles on it. Um, it has grown considerably this year. So it's put on growth. Got a couple of little branches right near the base. Um, all a bit one-sided, quite honestly. A bit lopsided, this tree. Um, but there are branches pointing this way. And then there's this great big long straight bit with growth on the top. The plan was obviously thickening up the base, um, which doesn't seem to have done much this year. Because of this large branch here, we've now got a swelling here. So uh, not quite sure what I'm gonna be doing with that. Uh, again, if I dislike it enough, it'll go to somebody else. But that's as it is now. Now this is my golden larch forest. Uh, difficult to do a forest with only five trees, but I think the trunk layout has actually worked and has created some false depth. <laughs> uh, mainly by putting the slightly larger trunks at the front and the slightly smaller ones towards the back, it gives an impression of depth. Now this has just been allowed to grow. There's no styling been done on this. And that's all that's happening this year. This should be getting its autumn colours soon. And then next year we have stuff we can work with. Yeah, we've got some quite long branches so we can start getting what I'd like, which is an arch to walk through, you know, like a forest path. So we've got plenty to pull down, yeah, on some of these trees to actually get some width. We've got height. This doesn't need to be any higher, it just needs to thicken up. So as far as growing this on is concerned, that's all I wanted to do this year and it's done it. it these had poor roots on them. Given the top growth, I would imagine there's now some pretty good roots. But what I do need to do is get this moss off. This goes right down in the pot. So we will have a go at that before winter sets in. It can keep the plant too wet in winter. Yeah, so it's not allowing the evaporation, which is great in the heat wave, but not so good in winter, so that needs to come off. And it's also buried my little path that I did. <laughs> I just did a different coloured um, path through the middle, just well, a bit of a joke, really. Anyway, that's what that looks like now. Well, this is my purple beach. Um, I've done nothing to this. This is as I acquired it, basically. Um, <clears throat> I was a little sort of put out that all of the growth tips had been pinched prior to me getting it, but nonetheless, as a consequence, we do have some good buds to work with for next year that will form, each one of those buds will be an extension which can be pinched to increase density. Um, I'll point that out. If you see a lot of this stuff, on the surface of your media under normal circumstances it means it's waterlogged you know this I didn't pop this this is not in my stuff so I don't know what it is in it looks like it's just in very very fine akadama it looks like it's almost turned to dust which would then hold a ridiculous amount of water so um, yeah that'll get repotted in the spring so that I know what's so that I know what it's in um, not much to do with this tree, really. Um, it's got some shape to the trunk. I don't like twisty, turny, deciduous trees that don't look natural, because that's not how a beech tree would grow. 
quite honestly, in the wild, it would probably grow absolutely dead straight. Um, but nonetheless, it has some form, but then it loses it here. So I think we might need to do something with this. It's very, very thick, and that's not going to bend very easy at all. But we could just form a new apex. Just pick one of these side branches and do a trunk chop. Start again. Then I can direct the tree in the, whichever direction I want. Yet to be decided, um, all the purpose of today is, is to just get a, a picture of uh, what it looks like now. Now this is endearingly known as my birthday tree, Japanese white pine, grafted onto black pine stock. The graft is relatively obvious, but I spent a long time going over all the trees before I selected, and I selected this on the basis that there is some taper. So in theory, that graft will look less and less obvious as this tree gets older. I've done some styling on this, um, not a lot, um, but I do have a basic shape. Yeah, we've got some flow, that was already there obviously. We've got some gnarly bark and we have enough branches to be able to get some nice pads going next year when this comes into growth. And if these are buds, then we're going to get the growth next year and we're going to be able to bud select. Yeah, we've got some wire on here. That's okay to stay. If it bites in a bit, it's not the end of the world. Um, yeah, now I potted it there on reflection. I think we need to be about there. But that's an opinion. And as it got repotted this year, it won't get done again next year, so it stays as it is. But when you're designing a tree, if it's not potted at the right angle, you have to make sure that you keep turning it to the angle you want it as you style, or you'll style it wrong. Yeah? So, uh, anyway, I just need a shot of where we are with it so far. I think this tree's got some potential. And this is my little Japanese larch and I hope it's doing autumn and not dying on me <laughs> but the brown needles are all old ones um, there's a it's put on a fair bit of growth this year on top of a poor root system so I hope the root system has grown to match but um, next year we will have plenty to pinch back and push the side growths back on these branches there's plenty of places where growth will take place to push it in nearer the trunk on some of these branches. And we've got some ramification to be able to work with. Yeah, again, pushing the tips back. We should start getting some nice pads on this. Um, but that's as it is now. There's lots of potential here yet to be achieved. I wasn't prepared to hack this tree back and take its growth off because that growth is the solar panels that generates the root system. So for this year, it was allowed to grow. Hopefully next year with a more suitable root system and some strength in the plant, we can start pinching back and trimming back and actually making these branches a bit denser. So that's where we are with that one. Right, this is a collected Scots pine that I haven't worked on yet. Um, it has branches in suitable places to do something with. It's got some form near the top of the trunk. Its bad bit is here. This is not good. Um, could do a trunk chop there. Um, possibly try for a literati and just keep this one branch and take the whole of the rest of the tree off and just taper this in. Anyway, I haven't really planned on what I'm going to do with this yet. I took that big chunk off <laughs> um, and, and that's as far as I've got. Um, it's just a raw tree collected from the wild. Um, Technically speaking, it wasn't dug up, it was pulled out of the ground, literally. I got hold of it and pulled and fell um, what not over what not. <laughs> uh, well, that's how it was collected. Not many roots. 
given the growth it's put on this year, it must now have a reasonable root system. And there's an awful lot of um, branches that being a Scots pine can be pushed back to get back budding now that it's got some roots to be, roots to be able to push it hard. So uh, not decided what shape this is going to eventually be or what I'm going to do with it. I've just let it grow this year. Right, next we've got my beech tree. This tree is coming along nicely. I, I, I like this tree a bit more each year. It's starting to get the grey colour to its bark. It has some shape to the trunk without being ridiculous. As I said, I don't like twisty, turny, deciduous trees. There's quite a bit of wildlife on this one I can see moving all over the place. Um, yeah, so uh, this has always been a debate which is the front on here. Um, so I'm going to have to move it forward or it won't turn around. Um, that's what I've always thought of as the front, but it does mean the apex runs away from us. But not a lot. That could be corrected by changing the potting angle because the branches lend themselves nicer from this side. Um, you know, the first two branches are this side of the tree in effect. And then, you know, we've got this front branch here. This is gonna to have to come off, <laughs> this is completely wrong. Um, but again, this has been allowed to grow quite a bit this year, um, thicken up the trunk and all that. And we've got plenty to work with on here. So uh, yeah, still debating, which is the front. Should we have the trunk coming towards us? Or should we have it going away and alter it slightly at repotting time to straighten it? Which is probably what I'll do. So I'm going to take my picture of this one from, from this side. In fact, I'll do both. So we'll, uh, we'll get a still from that side. And we'll turn it around. And get one from there and I can study those then think about which bits to keep what bits to shape but that's got a lot to work with it's just becoming a very nice tree <laughs> what would do this, this tree the world of good um, is smaller leaves but again when you let them grow the first thing that will happen is you get the giant leaves you know um, you have to keep pinching it back and everything to get the smaller leaves, but there's no point in doing that if you haven't got your shape right yet. So, so that's that one, one of the bigger ones. Uh, this is my other Scots pine. Looks a little bit straggly at the moment because the older needles are dying back and I haven't gone round sort of flopping them off. You only need to touch them and they fall. Um, if you're having to pull them off, then they're not ready. Um, basic shape on this tree is okay. I'm happy with it, but what I might do is strap that to the trunk next year and pull it in so that it gets closer to the trunk and the um, separates it slightly from the branch above and pulls the branch above down a bit as well which then separates it from the apex and gets a nice gap in here which I'm losing. That's called growth. <laughs> when it grows, you can lose your gaps, but you can recreate them. So I'm okay around this side, although this is a weak part of the tree, it's good enough to actually tell the story of the, you know, the mountain tree with all the branches being pushed across this way and becoming short and stumpy this side into the wind. So that's the story I want with this tree. I will show you some. I haven't cleaned this up or done the carving I'd planned to do or put the um, preserver on it either, the sulphur. But look what's happening round the back. The whole of the bark is all sort of separating off round here. Now you do get that with Scots pine. You know, it, it does flake and older parts of the bark do come off. But um, yeah, that's relatively recent that's done. And that's growth, basically. The trunk is expanding and pushing the bark apart. But anyway, that's the back.
we pretend we can't see that. <laughs> this is the front. <laughs> right, so not much more work to do on this apart from keeping its shape, which with the Scots Pines easy. You know, you just do your, your bud selection and your candle pinching and get more back buds and just keep doing that. Anything that gets in your way or breaks the skyline, you just take it off. There's enough foliage there that a couple of pieces being removed is not going to affect the outline. So, uh, yeah. Never a tree is finished, but this is probably one of the ones I've got that's closer to being finished because I'm happy with its overall shape and design. You know, just need some finishing touches perhaps. Anyway, that's that one. And this is the Chinese juniper where both of the air layers failed. Um, the air layers were to do something else um, with, so that's nothing to do with this tree. Um, they were destined to be cut off whether they were failures or successes, so that's where they were. Um, apart from that, this tree has had nothing done since I got it. Let me just get these rocks off. They had to stop it blowing over in the wind. So we've got some trunk in here that's going to lend itself to actually taking the bark off and exposing some wood. So I do plan on doing some carving here. I haven't done final branch selection. That's still to be done. And there is quite a bit of it. Can't keep it all. <laughs> some of it's going to have to go. But that level of design is yet to be done. So um, I'm going to get a picture from both sides on this one. This one to show the trunk. Let's get in a bit closer. Like that. And then I'll do one the other side to show to show the amount of growth basically, nothing more than that. And last but not least is my De Shoujo, um, Asa Palmatum De Shoujo. This again had all of its tips pinched right back. That was hard work, that was a lot of growth. But it has kept it quite compact this year. Um, it, did, it missed its repot. It must be repotted next year, but um, yeah, it's it's got some quite good form that was given to me. That's as it was when I bought it, and um, I don't plan on doing anything drastic to this apart from keeping its shape really, and getting it down lower in a deeper pot. So uh, that's that one. Let's just get back a bit, make sure we get it all in as he falls off the step. That'll do. Okay, a look at all the trees, purpose to get pictures, and as I haven't got anything else to do this afternoon, I thought what I'd do is I'd get a bit arty in the editing room, and as the purpose of this was to actually generate some stills from the video clips, what I thought I'd do is generate those stills, do the photo editing that I want to do on them, then bring them back into the um, video processing software and do them as a pop-up of the actual final photo that I've taken as part of the video. You following this? <laughs> yeah, I might not say it right, but I know what I'm doing. So that hopefully will be the finish, finished video. As I haven't done one for a very long time, I thought, well, we could make this one a little bit flashier than normal, shall we say. And thanks for dropping by. If you're not subscribed, it would be nice if you did so. Help this channel grow a bit. Progress is very slow. And <laughs> don't forget the old thumbs up. Every little bit helps. Thanks for watching. See you again next time.